So are you really this person, or are you the entire universe experiencing what it's like to be a person? Are you actually a person, or is that just a simulated experience that reflects back to you all the beliefs you have about a person? What if you're not actually a person? What if you're just experiencing what it's like to be a person? Everything about the person is constantly changing, ever moving. Therefore, it's a simulation. It's a simulation of whatever you think it is. And if you think that any single person or awake teacher or anyone is going to try to give you an experience that undermines and overcomes what only you can stop believing, that's what keeps us chasing and running. But what if we actually had an experience of just stopping for a moment? And we actually just, instead of continuously saying what things are, because it's not like you have to make things into something different, you just have to stop saying what things are for a second and see what kind of experience that is. When you start to open up to a perception that is in the deepest alignment when you're, with your truth, your body is an emotional compass and you start to feel very relaxed. When something is not quite in the deepest alignment with your truth, there's a sense of constriction. And so all these feelings we have all day aren't really reactions to the people, places, and things but actually just reminding us of the quality of our seeing. And sometimes even in a, an environment like this, if there's a reaction or a constrictedness to what I'm saying, it's, it, it, it could be because the emotional compass is so out of whack that the emotional compass feels tight and constrictive when what is being spoken about is giving someone permission to step out of a belief system that they're afraid of letting go of. So no matter what you're feeling, we're just here to explore together. I'm not here necessarily to tell you what's true as if I'm the one that you need to believe. I'm here to give you an experience so you can find out for yourself. My only interest is your clarity. Only your clarity. And your clarity is unique. So how you're going to go about realizing the truth might be different from anything else. So to think there's one specific path, you know, it just limits you. And it limits the experience you can have of how much you matter. You came here to matter. And you didn't come here to matter after you've done something spectacular. You appearing to exist as a you who appears to exist matters already. The only thing is, does it matter to you? Or is it only once you do something special? You see, that's the game we play with ourselves on a very subtle level. Only when I do something really special and we keep ourselves in a perception of separation by separating ourselves from a world that we need to matter to so we can then allow ourselves to matter by becoming what nothing in the universe has ever asked us to be. Again, don't believe me. Believe the feelings in your body. So let's have a simple experience together. What happens if instead of trying to make something limited to something expansive, we just stop saying what things are? Because again, after all, what we affirm something to be becomes a simulated experience reflected in all these reflections and expressions of life. And when you start to settle into the truth of your nature, the natural way in which this simplicity moves is that there's just a spontaneous or over time a gradual sense of just no longer needing to suggest what things are and what they're not. And instead, there's just an experience of what, all, of what already and always is. And, I'm, and I don't know if you're aware that you can have that experience at any moment. And once you have that experience, then something, so then a bell can go off and go, oh, this is actually the way it's always been. I just didn't see it because I was so captivated by all the other possibilities that only I was suggesting, believing, and confirming through simulated experiences. Right? Sometimes we don't know how easy it is to be ourselves because we've been lost in ourselves. So what if we have an experience together? So what if we just sit here together for a second, and we just don't say what anything is? The words of the labels don't matter. It's just the associations and beliefs behind it. So what if we just don't say the body is a body, we just let go of that. The floor is the floor. We don't ne ne necessarily worry about the walls being walls, the room being a room. We don't need to worry about the world being a world, a mind being a mind, thoughts being thoughts, reactions being reactions. 
We don't have to worry about opinions being opinions. We don't have to worry about separation being separate. We don't even have to worry about a universe being a universe. What if we just allow ourselves to experience what life's like without saying what things are or what they're not? We're just going to sit here and, and see what happens when we just experience without saying what it is and without saying what it isn't. We're going to have a little mini vacation from distinction. We're just looking, or we're feeling, or we're sitting. In this experience, you might be able to recognize that the most effortless, when I say effortless, it's not effortless in terms of what you're accomplishing. Effortless means when you stop saying what is and what isn't, what is naturally already occurring on its own without any sense of doership. Without you having to do anything, perhaps when you're just letting things be what they are and you're just not saying what it is and what isn't, you're just being, in a certain way I can say that. You can notice that what's already happening automatically that doesn't require you to be in control of it is a sense of awareness. You're aware, whether you're aware of breath, viewing this body, sitting, there's an awareness. That an awareness that maybe does not require you to push the awareness button, or more importantly, decide who is and who isn't aware. As you're just aware of whatever you're aware of, can you feel in this natural openness of just letting go and seeing what happens on its own? Is there a sense of needing to decide who is and who isn't aware, or is there just aware? Perhaps even if there's a thought of, but I'm aware, maybe that's just a thought arising in awareness. That in awareness, there's no actual separate identity arising. If it arises, it's just the experience of thought. Trying to get to awake awareness, unity consciousness, whatever you want to call it, is easy when you're not making it a road in any direction. It's stopping and saying, what happens naturally without any effort? There is awareness. In that awareness, as you look at me or whatever you're doing, is there a sense of need to say who you are or who you're not? And you could say, well, there's a body, but isn't the body just being experienced? Aren't you just aware of the experience of body? Notice how there isn't a necessary a, a sense of need to say who you are or who you're not. What does it feel like in your body when you don't say who it is and who it isn't that's aware? You're just aware. How easy does it feel? What if you just stop? What if on the inside you just stop saying who you are and who you're not? What happens? when you don't say who you are or who you're not because that doesn't feel like those thoughts have anything to do with just the naturalness of awareness then there's no thought of needing to hold this state there's no thought of this actually being a state it's only a state if you look at it from the viewpoint of believing it's a state it's not a state it is in fact the observation that witnesses all states of emotional highs and lows and surprises and betrayals and excitements and surprises and ups and downs. There is just a natural sense of awareness within your experience that experiences the experiences that you have called your own. And it's not a problem that you've done that. But what happens when you find yourself not needing to keep calling things your own. You just let it be an experience in awareness. Is there anything else but this natural effortless awareness that's aware of the experience? Perhaps the person you thought you were was actually just an experience in awareness. Perhaps you can start to feel, feel, not think, feel that maybe there's just an awareness that's aware of being a person 
and not a person striving to be in communion with awareness. And suddenly things can flip. Instead of it being a person looking for awareness, it's just an indescribable seeing or awareness, which is a pointer, not a label, but a pointer, that it is awareness itself in so many words, very loosely with the words, that is experiencing life as a person. That perhaps that life itself is a simulated experience of what it's like to be a person, and yet what you are is, is simply aware what it's like to feel, what it's like to think, what it's like to react to thinking, and what's it like to try to get rid of thinking, which is another part of thinking. What's it like to question and value and evaluate the thinking of other people's thinking with more thinking and compare and contrast what you think about this person who's only going to be the experience of what you say they are. And you say what they are because you said, this is what I am. All of that just arising in awareness. And does it feel like in the simplicity of awareness that awareness has actually a problem with any of this? Or is awareness just experiencing? I don't speak of awareness like it's a person. It is how, it is how that, which truly is indescribable, but is, but is just an, a constant seeing, experiences itself with senses. <laughs> 